Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by you. And Hello. On this glorious day, with some glorious news, fill us in, a new friend. I'm just the Star Wars. Just the Star Wars is in my brain. Mr. Star in, Wars in my veins and my brains because <laughs> there is some big Star Wars news. It's constantly happening over on the main channel. Obviously, all these leaks and stuff coming out after the, the Rise of Skywalker. We have stuff regarding the Duel of the Fates film, stuff regarding the High Republic, stuff regarding Taika Waititi's new film, Kenobi, everything. Every single Clone thing. Clone Wars season seven. It's too <laughs> much. I'm too weak. Help me. I think. Help, help I think week. Picard's just there going, I'm here as well. Exactly. Like, yeah, we'll get there. But, we'll um, get there in time. In terms of gaming stuff for Star Wars, we actually haven't heard that much in recent weeks. We obviously no. had the whole thing with Lucasfilm almost killing Jedi Fallen Order by saying we didn't want any lightsabers in it, which was a bit of a bummer. Mm -hmm. um, but actually now we have some huge Star Wars leak slash rumors coming from CineLinks' Jordan Mason, who says that EA have actually got plans for a remake slash sequel for Knights of the Old Republic. It is about time the Republic kind of came so back. I'm so excited. But yeah, basically he said that he first reported on this news in 2016 and mm -hmm. said that, you know, nothing really came from EA afterwards. Apparently they stepped back away from the project, mm -hmm. which, you know, EA, with their track record with Star Wars stuff, picking it up and then dropping it, like literally like a, just a plate. Like you have the, like a cat, you have the stuff on the table and there's a really cool Star Wars thing and it's just there going like this. Just and pours, it, it pours, pours it all off. Yeah. But yeah, apparently they're actually back in the works now and he says that this has come from the same two sources okay. that verified his scoop that Ewan McGregor was coming back for the Obi-Wan Kenobi show a few years Shout. back. So basically he says that one source says it's not so much a remake, but a sequel of sorts. Quote, it would be a Knights of the Old Republic project that would integrate elements from the first two games in order to bring certain things into the current Star Wars canon. Not necessarily a remake, so much as a reimagining. That obviously makes sense oh. given the way we have, you know, the new Star Wars canon, you know, when Disney came in, they basically wiped away all the old canon that's now called Legends, mm -hmm. which is nice that all people look is technically a part of. Yes. So this would be effectively their way of telling that same story, I imagine, with Revan and everything, you know, the Mandalorian Wars, which we've seen teased so much in recent years mm. with the Mandalorian, with the Clone Wars, okay, okay, to bring okay. it into the new canon. So, because Revan, if you're paying attention, is one of the names of the platoons of Sith that is, is in Rise of Skywalker. There's all those people that are watching the fight between Palpatine mm -hmm. and Rey, and one of those platoons of people is called Revan. So we know that the name Revan at least is canonized at this point in the new canon. Um, and for the sake of explaining the legend stuff, that's the name that they give to the defunct stuff. Yes. That Disney sort so of everything pre-2012 except the Clone Wars mm. counts kind of as, as that sort of thing. And yeah. the films, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And so Knights of the Old Republic was one of those things mm. that we thought of to be defunct, but it seems like it's been coming back in dribs and drabs. Yes. You take the Revan name and now this. And um, there's also also, it hasn't been fully confirmed yet, but the new movies seem to be going in this direction as well, mm -hmm. which is one of the most furtive periods in Star Wars history to go back to. Yes. Um, and if anyone hasn't seen the CG movies that are out there, I would still totally like recommend the them. Like Studios, they're really yes. good. If you want to get an idea of like how much you can do with this time period and this sort of like Game of Thronesian or like you know Shakespearean approach yes. to Star Wars, that stuff is so mineable yeah. for really good stuff. Exactly. So the High Republic <laughs> stuff that's going on with the films right now, we know, I believe, that basically this seems as though it's definitely happening is mm. that those films are going to take place 400 years before the event of the Phantom Menace and the Skywalker saga and then EA and uh, Lucasfilm and, and Disney and Marvel and Del Rey who do the novels they have this thing going on called Project Luminous okay. which is going to tie in all this new stuff in this basically new era for Star Wars set away from the Skywalker saga mm. apparently it's going to feature a young Yoda but Knights of the Old Republic takes place thousands of years in the past before the Rule of Two gets made uh, so that has obviously you know big potential almost Tolkien-esque potential for Ooh. fantasy clashes where you've got loads of Jedi with their lightsabers you've got Sith the Sith Empire mm. going on at the same time you've got the Mandalorian stuff maybe we'll see the first Mandalorian Jedi uh, Tar Vizsla I think he's called okay. one of the Vizslas who mm -hmm. becomes the first Mandalorian Jedi here's the dark saber which we saw in the Mandalorian Yes. Um, but yeah like this is such a cool idea I really hope if they are going down the remake route I think that's a really great idea mm. because almost in the same vein of Final Fantasy 7 remake you can introduce new people to this classic story yeah. in a way that obviously ties it back into the new canon and you actually have one of those stories I feel most people were dis most disappointed about not being in the canon anymore mm. actually coming back in I think that's a great gesture towards yeah. the fans. I think that's a really nice idea. And as someone who kind of had, I'd, I've never really gotten fully into the old Knights of Republic games. I got like, uh, mm. weird story, I got the sequel before I got the first oh, one. Oh, you in. I know. The it's first really, one's so much better. I know it is, but um, actually having that come in, I think that's a great idea. I would love to re-approach the Knights of Republic because I find it so fascinating and Ravenous is such an interesting Yeah, man, well, I love that world. I mean, I'd still recommend going back to Knights of the Old Republic now. Let's, your iPad? 
Yeah, you can. Well, don't, don't, don't. Do not play on your iPad. Don't play on a phone. Play it on some sort of console. I don't care how you do it, but find a console. Um, let's talk about gameplay, because mm-hmm. if they're going to bring it back now, um, the old school Bioware formula, or the way that they structured those games, where you know you have control over movement, but if yeah. you engage in combat, everything freezes. I think that's why a lot of people, well, some people bounce off that if they expected a more Me action. Me yeah. I did initially yeah. too. Yeah. I, I didn't like the idea of I walk up to a guy, and then I press a button, and then my guy goes, Oh, I love that. I just I kind of find that kind of boring. I mean, mm-hmm. I, like, I know the whole there's a whole tactical element to it and stuff, yes. but like I'm very much here. If you're going to empower me as a, as a Jedi, let me have full control over all my motions, mm-hmm. like they did in Jedi Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Make me have like you know, let me go with wing. They go, wait, that's, all I I want. Want. that's all I want. Yes. Do you think that they would um, do something more like that, though? I mean, mm-hmm. Bioware have only become more action heavy over the years yeah. as well. Um, I mean, they haven't, they're not necessarily, nor have they ever really done a melee focused game other than Jedi Empire. Uh, Jedi Empire, Jade <laughs> Empire. That's what they should call it. Yeah. Um, you know, they haven't really done a, they haven't designed a full on melee system. Mm-hmm. It's always been like taking time, and then they've done shooters in the newer games. Um, do you think they would just overhaul it and do something more new age? I kind of hope so. That might be mm. sacrilegious for people who really <laughs> love the original games, but uh-huh. I know that's what Final Fantasy VII Remake is doing. As yes, well. So totally. I feel as though if you're going to modernize this sort of thing, mm. I don't really see that kind of um, that turn-based element of gameplay really mm. work or really vibing. It could work. I'm not to say that it can't. Uh-huh. But I definitely think if we were going to get Knights of the Republic in this day and age, and you want to make it feel as epic as possible on next-gen consoles, mm-hmm. you do kind of go the full. Let's make this as cinematic as possible. Let's make you feel like the Jedi with this epic story going on in the mm-hmm. background, and do it that way. All the stuff with Revan as well. Like not to give it away, <clears throat> but it has one of the coolest twists. Yeah. Um, um, like almost like gaming's version of the I am your father twist. Like mm-hmm. for, when it happened at the time, it was 2003 for the Old Republic. Yeah. Very much like a, a sort of late childhood, early teenage me going like, oh my God, yeah. like it's a big old thing. That's one thing. of the things the internet ruined for me. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Aww. I mean, I was, I was young enough to actually not get spoiled by the Darth Vader thing because I watched those films <laughs> when I was like three or four. Right. So I, I went in and I was like, what? But when this happened, I, the internet had, like ruined You made a sonic me, noise there, which very is, good. What? Yeah, like a sonic jumping noise. But there is this, the Knights of the Republic stuff isn't the only news that has been mentioned in this report. Now, obviously, we know that EA have big plans for Star Wars in the future. We mm. know that um, the Project Luminous stuff that is coming out, apparently that's going to start with a game. And the one yes. thing that Mason mentions in his report for Seed Links, he says that he doesn't have any timing for when this all stuff might come out. Mm-hmm. But apparently, EA are planning sequels, not just a sequel, sequels okay. for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I imagine that'll probably be a trilogy of sorts and if we're going to yeah, go yeah. that route. Uh, there's the Project Luminous time being made. A Switch exclusive too, uh, which is pretty interesting. No word on a Battlefront 3 so mm. far, so I'm curious to see whether or not we could get a Siege style thing going on with Battlefront 2, where yeah. they just don't bother releasing a sequel and they just keep adding updates. That's what I was going to say, Battlefront 2 has kind of become its own sequel yeah. at this point. The amount of stuff they've put into that game since launch, considering that its reputation was so in the just on yeah. on fire, in the ground on fire. If you go back to Battlefront 2 now, it is one of the most worthwhile Star Wars products I can't stop playing ever. it. I just keep on it's playing really Heroes as the Villains and playing as my boy Obi-Wan, and then there'll be a Darth Maul, and he'll do the Kenobi, <laughs> and it's the best thing ever. I just I'm a big it. fan of the uh, um, the, the Starfighter Assault stuff. Mm-hmm. I like just played his Poe Dameron. I like taking it to the belt and quipping his Poe. Um, but in regards to that, I like the idea of them splitting those games out more. Mm-hmm. Let Battlefront be its own platform. It kind of just is at this point anyway. Um, and something like the Switch exclusive. I mean, The Witcher 3 proved that you can get anything working on yeah. Switch, but I'd rather they made something for that console. That kind of makes mm-hmm. more sense to me. Especially when it comes to like, single-player driven yeah. stuff. There's one thing this report doesn't actually mention, but mm-hmm. I know for a fact that EA Motive are working on a Star Wars game, and I believe Mitch Dye might be involved with that project as well. Good I've seen luck. a few people talking about that on Twitter. So I I believe that Motive potentially could be doing the Project Luminous one if I'm going to say they're mm. doing any of these. Maybe it could be a Switch exclusive. They've mm-hmm. talked about you know these things that they're doing as being really new and unique. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see where all this is going. It seems as though EA Star Wars has finally turned that corner. A little bit. I mean, they did with Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. It's still recommendable. I mean, it, it's, do you think it's like a, they're all trying for this sort of clean break, that it's mm. this overall mandate? Because it, it makes sense, well, it kind of makes sense in the movies to get away from the new stuff and just try something completely yes. fresh. You think that would work? I think the overall, further you get away, I think the expanded universe stuff always works the better the further away it gets from mm. the original films. That's not to say that all the you know the expanded novels and comics are bad or anything. I love them. I've read so many of them. <laughs> but I think if you're going to really hone in on just how epic and expansive, mm. you know, George Lucas's universe is, mm-hmm. by taking it further away from the Skywalker saga, you're not as constrained or beholden to the film. Which I feel yeah, as though yeah. might be a thing that Fallen Order has to reckon with in the next few years as we get sequels and spin-offs or whatever. I'm curious what you do with yeah. that story as well. Um, but Project Luminous certainly and then 
Knights of the Little Republic as well are a testament to, or well, hopefully Project Luminous will be, but Knights of the Little Republic certainly is a testament to the further away you get from these films, mm. the more fertile ground you have to mm -hmm. kind of basically do what you want with the with the franchise and make it all part of that cohesive narrative vision that's being guided by Lucasfilm story. Yeah, which, I, which is so ironic in the grand scheme of things mm. because they got rid of all that stuff, all those stories, and then they're sort of gradually plugging them back in again. Yeah. Like something like Revan is a worthwhile story yeah. to tell, but it's taken this long for them to finally go back to I it. I mean, it makes sense yeah. in a way because the old canon it had was full of so many different disparate elements that kind of contradicted each mm. other, whereas with now the new one, there are still occasional can, uh, issues of canonicity. I think The Rise of Skywalker contradicts some, <laughs> some things that happened a few months before in the mm -hmm. expanded novels. But overall, I think building a more cohesive universe without having the feel to ever have to actually go back and retcon mm. stuff, I think that's oh, that, really yeah. exciting because yeah. as someone who reads comics all the time, one of the things that I get really annoyed about is when you have a really nice continuity and DC and Marvel go, cat paw and then just <laughs> take everything off the table. That needs to be a new term, cat pawing stuff. Mm. Just swiping it off the top of the fireplace. Anyway, let us know think down in the comments below of a potential Knights of the Old Republic reboot and where you see the future of the Star Wars games going. For now though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. And I've been Ewan from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.